So Blizzard has just announced the launch date for The War Within. We are all very excited and we know the exact date the first season will start. So there's a lot of prep work to be done. And in my mind, there are 10 things that you could do right now before The War Within in order to make sure you're going in fully prepped. The first of which is the calendar. There's a few important dates that you want to take note of so you can organize your real life schedules, be it your paid time off or whatnot. Don't make the mistake of taking your paid time off at the wrong time during the launch or the expansion. I'll explain why. But if you look at the calendar of events, currently we are already live in the beta and that's also an important part of the prep and we'll come to that very shortly. So we get early access on the 22nd of August. If you have the epic edition of the War Within expansion, you will get early access and you can start playing the game on 22nd August. If not, you join the rest of the world on 26th of August for the launch of the War Within. And before we go into that early access versus non-early access debate, just know, I think they have made it very clear that early access wouldn't allow you to farm any form of player power because the real player power gains are really only towards season one. You're really not missing out on anything. The only thing I can think of where you have an early head start and an advantage in is really gold making because at the start of the expansion, people who level up their professions way faster than the rest, they always have an edge in terms of selling, you know, the brand new expansion stuff. So unless you're really a goblin and you want to make a lot of money, there's really no hurry in trying to get into early access. That's my take. Also, you get a bit of advantage when it comes to leveling all your alts. But if you're not playing every single class in the game, honestly, you have more than sufficient time to level your alts from the 26th of August all the way to 10th of September, which is the launch of season one. That's like more than two weeks. So don't worry too much about the FOMO stuff. Now, the other thing that's missing on this calendar is the pre-patch date because the pre-patch date is really important because all the new systems kick in. You know, the warband, the new transmog system that we'll talk about very shortly, as well as you being able to prep and update all your add-ons and your user interfaces to the new expansion, that's an important date and it's missing on this calendar. So historically, we have about three weeks of pre-patch, roughly. So if you work backwards three weeks from 22nd of August, you likely have pre-patch launching on something like 5th of August. That also means that after the pre-patch goes live, assuming it's the 5th of August, you have about two weeks also to play the Mist of Pandaria remix, which is the time running event that we'll talk about very shortly. Some people have said that they expect the pre-patch to go live when MOP remix eventually ends on the 19th, but I think it's too late because Three days between 19th of August to 27th of August, not enough for pre-patch. So 5th August, my real bet. The next thing to think about when it comes to the calendar is when are you organizing your personal schedule to play WoW? Because at the start of the expansion is usually when there's the most to do, right? Level up, prepare your characters. Some people take their paid time off. And I've done this rodeo many times when it comes to new expansions. You don't ever want to take any form of paid time off during early access or launch. It's just pointless. Not to mention, on the first day or the second day of new expansion launches, be it early access or launch, I expect there to be server issues. It's a typical WoW expansion launch. Servers will be unstable, it will go down, there'll be a lot of bugs, some quests wouldn't be doable. And taking paid time off on those days could be very frustrating because you're stuck in queue and you're getting disconnected. Not worth it. If there's really any time to be taking paid time off for the expansion, it really is when season one starts. Because when season one starts is when, well, the race to world first begins. You can have on the side monitor the race to world first. And usually this is when they remove all the shackles or gearing. They remove all the restriction when it comes to mythic plus farming. You can farm to your heart's content all the gear. And also if you're raiding with a guild, this is when you know the bus is the highest for all the new raids and all the new dungeons and whatnot. So I recommend that if you want to take paid time off, 10th September is probably the best time. That is probably what I'll be doing as well. If you take any vacation before the 10th of September, the real thing that you can do to really help your player power is just flying around farming those super rares, which are gear that you replace really quickly once season one launches. So it's really pointless. That's my advice. Okay, next, the beta. Now I think the beta is important even if you do not have access to the beta. And let me explain why. The War Within brings a lot of changes. Some of them class reworks. On top of that, they're introducing hero talents. You have access to two hero talents on top of your current talent trees in Dragonflight for every single spec you play. So if you're thinking of switching mains, you're thinking of playing a new class, a new spec, beta coverage is really important for you to determine what mains are you playing when it comes to the new expansion. If you do not have beta access, 
don't you worry because content creators like myself, we are all putting out guides, you know, previews or all these specs. So you probably want to stay up to date on what are some of the specs that looks the hottest coming into the role you're playing, whether you're tanking, healing or DPSing. Although I think the joke within the Mythic Plus community right now is class buffs are so important that yeah, if you play one of those classes that brings a class buff, you probably won't go out of fashion. They haven't really solved the augmentation evoker problem in Mythic Plus, so that's that. You know, Mark of the Wild is still really powerful from Druids. Anyway, I digress. Point is, if you don't have beta, you can start watching people's beta contents on YouTube, figure out what you want to play. But if you have beta, this is really important, you can actually start figuring out what your main is by playing the actual new classes. Now, if you have never beta tested before, Blizzard put out a fantastic guide on how to get started on beta, how to download, how to launch, etc. I'll put the link in the description. But essentially, beta is already live if you bought the epic edition of The War Within and you will have immediate access to the beta. Now, Blizzard has also clarified that if you bought the collector's edition, they would send you your beta key code latest by the 12th of June. So whether you have the epic edition, whether you have the collector's edition, you'll get access to the beta. And also you can opt into the beta as well, although that's really RNG and by chance. And once you get on the beta servers, you want to find a separate region called these go to 11. And these servers are focused on endgame content. And it has all these vendors set up that lets you basically equip all the endgame max level equipment. We have professional vendors and trainers. We have all the class tier set vendors. You can check out the tier sets already. You have the PVP vendors. And you have the trinket vendors too, where you can try out all the brand new trinkets coming into the war within. Now keep in mind, all these servers, they are for a max level kind of experience. You do not get to experience the 11.0, the war within outdoor zones, but you do get to try out the new dungeons, etc., and the raids eventually where they do raid testing. Now, if you want to try out the story, the brand new zones, you can play the other realms. I believe they are Katga and Elaria, and you can basically start leveling from level 70 onwards to what the level cap is in the war within. Again, if you don't have beta access, I'll keep you posted on all the tank changes. That's my focus anyway. So stay tuned to this channel. So once you've figured out what your new mains, your new class is, then the question begs, do you need to level them? And chances are, if you're swapping classes, you do need to level them. Even if you're not swapping mains, you definitely want to level alts. Why? The War Within introduces warbands, and they made it very clear, if you've been following the War Within, this is super alt friendly. Warbands allows you to transfer gear from your main to your alts, it even allows you to share things like transmog, reputational gains, and all these wonderful things. In short, playing alts is going to be way better in the world within, and it requires very little effort to maintain your alts, even less than Dragonfly. So what are the best ways to level your alt right now? There's really two schools of thought. The first is you capitalize on a time-running event, which is the Mist of Pandaria remix that's going on right now, and it ends on the 19th of August. So depending on when you watch this video, this option might be already done and dusted for you. If you haven't played the old Mist of Pandaria, you know, all the frog farming controversies aside, it's a really fun way to be leveling a new alt. Basically, you play through the entire Mist of Pandaria with a lot of kind of player power that is very easily granted to you to allow you to overpower all the content. You can go through all the old raids. And as you experience all the expansion content, you basically level up this ult. And this ult, this time running ult, its level progression would then be carried forward into the War Within. So you can level it to the max level on the Mist of Pandaria Remix Realms. And eventually, when the war within begins, you can use those characters and play it. It's as simple as that. This is probably the more fun way to level right now. But the second way is the more traditional way. And it's still very fast. In fact, arguably even faster than Mist of Pandaria Remix. Assuming you don't have all the leveling up experience bonus from the Remix stuff. But the old leveling routes, I think the common wisdom is do Chromie time. Choose Warlords or Draenor. Which is one of the fastest way to level because there are multiple events and there's a lot of XP you get for doing things that you get to do on the side as you complete the main quest. Also a reminder, you can download the add-on Azeroth Pilot Reloaded. This is like an amazing autopilot thing where you can just switch off your mind, watch Netflix, follow the arrow, click on NPCs, they auto turn in, auto accept, tell you where to go next. It's just great. Additional tip, remember if you're queuing for dungeons, which is also pretty fast in terms of leveling, queuing as a tank or healer, traditionally your queues will pop way faster. So if you have a hybrid class, just quickly throwing some binds onto your tank or healer kind of role setup will make that go a lot faster. Since we're talking about leveling, the next thing to do is to get prepared for leveling. And there are a lot of items in the game that lets you level up way faster. So this applies to not only leveling your ults, but also when the war within launches, you can level way faster to max level using all these items. You know, really quickly, you have the cloak of coordination that lets you port to your capital city. You can, you can turn on your war mode, turn off war mode. 
Remember, War Mode gives you bonus experience while leveling, although you get subjected to PvP. Depends on you, personal preference. There's also items that allows you to access your mailbox way faster, your KT Stamp Whistle, Molly. All these not only are great for leveling, but you know, I'm sure you've done Mythic Plus where people ask, do you have a mailbox because they want to buy pots or something. So for people who have not bothered to get all these items, maybe you take the time during this pre-expansion lull to get all these items, right? I'll put the relevant wild head links to all these items in the description. So you can just click on it and then you read the top comment, it'll tell you exactly how to get it. It's really very fast. Then there's also things like gun shoes. It propels you forward. It makes you move way faster. This is very useful for areas where you cannot mount up. I always bind my gun shoes to one of my hot bars when the new expansion launches. The other one that's useful is Alliance Glider Kits. This allows you to basically glide down from a very high height. It's self-explanatory. Gets you from point A to point B way faster. There's also stuff like the battle standard of coordinations where you basically plant a flag and you get a bonus experience gain while you're in the vicinity. You can get all these prep ahead of time for leveling. And then you have transport. Now transport farming is interesting because with the war within, when the pre-patch launches, the new transport system kicks in. And how does that work? Basically, they explain that for warbands, how it works is, let's say you play a cloth class. Let's say you're a priest. In the past, before the war within, let's say you loot a plate armor. Well, you cannot learn that plate armor as a transmog as a priest. Or as a priest, let's say you loot a two-hand axe. You cannot learn that transmog for, let's say, your warrior or your paladin. It's not possible. But with the war within, that's changing. They're allowing that to happen. And when the pre-patch goes live, that system kicks in. As you can see from the image here, Blizzard has already been very explicit. If you read the announcement, essentially what it means is when the pre-patch goes live, anything that you loot, regardless of your armor type, whether your leather, your plate, your mail, your cloth, whether you can use that weapon, you can immediately learn the transmog that you basically obtain. And so given all that, you probably want to get prepared for your transmog farming when the pre-patch launches, because when the expansion finally launches properly, you probably don't have time for transmog farming, right? So you want to already look good going into the expansion launch. That said, there's a couple of things you need to think about when it comes to transmog farming. Firstly, there is this trick that you can technically do before pre-patch launches, and how does that work? So you see, Blizzard has already confirmed when pre-patch launches, whatever you loot, even if you can't equip the weapon, even if you can't equip that armor type, it will still be added to your transmog collection to be used by your other characters who can use them. So there's technically a window where 30 days before the pre-patch, if you go and farm the old raids and you leave all the loot on the bosses and you do not loot them, then when pre-patch launches, you open up your mailbox and because your mail will last for 30 days, you can then loot all the cosmetic stuff that you didn't loot from those bosses that you did the old raids for in terms of transmog farming, and they could be instantly learned across your entire warband characters. So which means if you take the 5th August date that I expect pre-patch to land, and maybe if you want to add some buffer, call it the 12th of August, something like 12th of July onwards or mid of July onwards, you can already start going to the old raids and farm transmog and just leave the loot there. Don't loot them because they'll be mailed to your mailbox if you don't loot them, right? And then you open your mailbox on pre-patch day and you will be able to learn all these transmog at one go. So that's one nifty trick you can think about. Again, there's probably not too much to do before the new expansion. Season 4 is a bit of a quiet lull period, so you can do that. The other thing that you want to do because once pre-patch launches, you have a couple of weeks where you can still farm transmog before the final uh, expansion launches, right? And so you have a few weeks of additional chances to get the transmog you want. To speed up the process, you can already start preparing characters for dedicated transmog farming. How? Ideally, you want a class like a demon hunter or a druid that is very mobile. They can run through indoor areas really quickly with mobility abilities. Demon Hunters also have double jump that can allow them to kind of do some nifty vertical skips. Like for example, Black Temple, I think there's some funky vertical skips you can do. But more importantly, you can also prepare them with additional speed gear. These are enchants that increases your movement speeds and they all stack. They make you move way faster. And so that can be your dedicated character for transport farming for those few weeks and you can just make them move faster in the instance. All the items that you see on screen, these are largely enchants. And during this expansion lull, is where you can pick them up for really cheap on the auction house. Again, links to them I'll put in the description so you guys can access that really easily. 
and you know exactly what to buy, where to get them. All right, speaking about transmog farming, the next thing you can do is the Mage Tower. Now, Blizzard hasn't mentioned what they'll do with the Mage Tower come the War Within. Maybe the Mage Tower that, you know, you currently can access in Dragonfly, the old Legion one, could still be accessed in the War Within. But there's a reason why you want to do them now, and that's because whenever you have a brand new expansion launch, scaling of old content sometimes goes out of whack because Blizzard tunes, you know, I guess the scaling of content in the past. You, you know, we've seen this in Dragonflight launch. The old transmog farm, I think, especially for some of the Battle for Azeroth stuff was kind of broken because of how scaling worked for older content. So since you're doing transmog, you're thinking about looking good for the new expansion on your main, you might want to just get the mage tower done and dusted. A lot of the old consumables that you'll be using to get like the best stats for your mage tower kind of run is also very cheap right now because again, it's allowed. And you definitely don't want to risk doing mage tower on hard mode when the new expansion launches for the war within in case you get hit by some weird ass scaling kind of, you know, nerf. So get the mage tower done if that's something you have not. Number seven, UI and add-ons, my personal passion point. I like to start my new expansion by clearing out every single week aura from the previous expansion, things that you don't need. These are all resource hogs. They take up unnecessary memory, even if they're not loaded actively in your week aura. So just make sure you clean them all up. As usual, you can expect me to provide all the war within profiles, be it your plater, be it your class week auras. They'll be all ready ahead of time. So you can start the new expansion with a proper UI. But you definitely want to set aside some time from pre-patch onwards to install all these UI and add-ons so that when the war within launches officially, you don't have to waste time setting up your UI and your interface. The other thing that I love to do going into a new expansion is I always screenshot all my action bars, essentially all my key binds that I'm currently using for every single class. You never know when the game will go bonkers, you'll lose your settings, you'll lose your add-ons. I always keep a backup of a screenshot of all my key binds across all my classes. I keep a backup of my WTF folder and my interface folder in the World of Warcraft directory. So that is not only the configuration files or all the add-ons, but also all the add-ons themselves. And you just file them away on a Google Drive or something. So if needed, you can at least restore them in case there's some form of corruption in the file system. And this might happen when you patch stuff. Now moving on to the next thing. I talked about house cleaning for your add-ons, your week aura, your interfaces. But you should also do some housekeeping for just your character stuff, right? Your bags. Your bangs, they are really messy. If you're like me, you probably have like a bag full of duplicate gear, a bang that has all these reagents that you don't need. Clean them all out, throw them all away for the new expansion, start afresh. It probably makes you feel better about the expansion as well. Gets you excited and in the mood to start afresh as well. All those pesky quests, you know, that you picked up that you are never going to do, delete all those quests. Stop tracking them, start with a fresh quest log, it's a new start. Dragonflight was a healing expansion, the war within is supposed to put us back on track, it's an epic 3 expansion saga, let's start it on the right footing. Start anew, you'll feel better about yourself. The next item to think about is who are you playing the war within with? And this is something I've been thinking a lot about as I speak to a lot of the top end M plus players. You know, I spoke to Alice Mir about it, I spoke to Equinox about it. I spoke to Hopeful about it and they all kind of echo the same thing, which is it's actually really important to find people you enjoy playing endgame content with, be it Mythic Plus, be it raiding, it's really important. And in all these podcast episodes, they've kind of got me thinking, we're not getting any younger, the people playing well. And it's important to think about how you want to maximize your enjoyment of this game, right? Because your real life responsibilities just keep increasing. And one of the things I've been thinking about is, who should I really be playing with? And it depends on your objective in the game. Is it to maximize your IO scores? Is it to maximize your rating achievements? Is it just to have fun in a leisurely way that has no time commitments? And depending on that, now is probably the right time to start looking for like-minded people you want to do the war within achievements with. If you want higher rating progression, maybe now is the time to trial with a better ranking guild. And now it's season four, it's allowed. A lot of their core raiders are taking a break. It's actually a great time to be trialing with some other more established guilds. You know, because they tend to have more slots in their roster right now. So impress them right now. So in the War Within, when it launches, you don't have to go looking for another guild. Same for Mythic Plus. I find Season 4 to be the best time to be networking, meeting people, adding people to your friends list. Because the people playing Season 4 right now, chances are they are probably also waiting for the War Within. They are not playing other games, right? They are also excited to play the War Within. And they're also looking to make friends. So start making a list of healers, of tanks, of DPS that you want to run with. So on launch day, hey, you have people to do content with. Start evaluating whether the people that you're currently doing Mythic Plus with, the people that you're doing raids with, are you happy with your current progression? Do you want something different? And if you do, nothing personal because we all play this game for different reasons. But definitely think about that because now is the best time. Once the expansion launches, you'll be too busy.
And the last thing to do is basically all the achievements, all the miles that you should be getting before the War Within launches because whenever expansions transit, whenever Season 4 goes away and the pre-patch for the War Within comes in, a lot of these achievements titles are going away. Your Season 4 mount rewards, your Season 4 titles, your Season 4 raids, all these achievements, they'll be going away once the pre-patch launches. And if you're one of those people who like to collect miles, collect titles, you probably want to get all these sorted ahead of time. And aside from everything I've mentioned, some bonus tips for you. And again, for many of you out there, this expansion is not your first rodeo, but it's kind of worth thinking about. Going into expansion launch week, a lot of us will be kind of no life in the game. You know, there's always a lot of hype, a lot of people in Discord to talk to, a lot of friends coming back to the game. And that means that you kind of neglect your real life, right? So you might as well get ahead of that, do your meal preps, stock up all the Doritos that you need or that you want to eat. What I also like to do is that I also do housekeeping in real life, where I game, where I basically play World of Warcraft, my table is basically cleaned of all these random things I've accumulated, be it my books, my papers, etc. Clean slate. Go into an expansion feeling fresh, feeling anew. And I find the idea of sitting in a clean room, playing a brand new expansion, that feeling is, you know, what gets me excited every couple of years. Tell me what you're going to do. Have you decided on your main? Would love to hear your comments. And with that said, I cannot tell you how excited I am to be going into the war within with you folks. This is the first expansion I'm going into knowing that we have crossed 100,000 subscribers, which was always kind of my lifelong goal for YouTube. But that does not make me any less motivated to make good content for you folks. So expect good quality content. I have a lot of ideas for great guides that I cannot wait to show you. So make sure you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already more good stuff coming your way. And also reminder, all the class we call us, all the UI profiles, they will all be there. All the plater profiles that you need, they will be there for you when the War Within launches. So don't worry about that. Lastly, a shout out to all the Patreon subscribers that you see on screen. These are the people who make all my content possible. Thank you so much for keeping all the content on my channels going. I really appreciate it. And if you'd like to support us, link to our Patreon is in the description. Happy preparing for the expansion. I will see you in the War Within or in the next video.